Zen 5 is alive and kicking Team Blue's hind end. This is the first in two videos that you're going to enjoy about a week apart on this channel. I've got the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7 CPUs in this and their use in Linux for both server and workstation loads. Technically, this, this is the world's first Zen 5 server. This server is Zen 5, it's a B650 chipset, it's AM5. Yes, I am cheating a little bit with this B650 motherboard, but this is from ASRock Rack. This is the 2U1G, liquid cooled. It can handle that 170 watts of madness, and it's got 1200 watt power supply, so it can also handle a 4090. Now the most exciting thing about these processors is that it's a new generation, it's Zen 5. And that they do carry significant performance uplift, both in a per core and a multi-core scenario. The Ryzen 7 and a Ryzen 5 processors are based around a new core Zen 5. It's a new microarchitecture. It paves the way for a lot of current and future functionality to work correctly. But more importantly, this is a second generation CPU for the AM5 socket. And so a lot of the early adopter teething issues that existed with AM5 are now gone and AMD has really locked it down. And there's a lot to love about the new Zen 5 architecture. We're starting with the most pedestrian of the Zen 5 processors, but things are really looking pretty good for AM5 in general. Yes, there are new motherboards coming. There is a new chipset that we saw at Computex, the X870, but if you're a Linux user, there's not a lot of difference for you between X870 and X670 or B650 and you know coming updated chipsets. USB 4 is a big one. It's PCIe tunneling capable USB type C ports. Think Thunderbolt compatibility. Can't call it Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt is an Intel technology, but it is PCIe peripheral via a USB C connector uh, that we've sort of enjoyed for a couple of generations now in AMD's mobile processors, and they have worked pretty much all the bugs out. There might be some legacy bugs with old like Thunderbolt 2 device compatibility, but generally if you have a Thunderbolt 3 device you can plug it in and basically it, it, it will work most of the time. So the desktop CPUs, they have AVX512. It's a 512 bit wide data path. This is a departure from their mobile Zen 5 counterparts. They can actually configure the silicon to have a, an FP512 or an FP256 data path. The mobile CPUs are FP256. So if you've seen benchmarks for these, they probably don't apply because the desktop counterpart is a much wider data path, true 512-bit data width. This thing is built with three and four nanometer technology, the four nanometers for the IO die, three nanometers for the compute dies. It has a 32K instruction cache, the op cache is 6K, the D cache is 48K, and the L2 cache is one meg, 16 away. One of the big microarchitectural changes here is something they call zero bubble conditional branches. Basically, when you have code and there's a branch in the code, which way do you predict? Well, branch prediction is the system tries to predict which way the code is going to go based on variables and everything else, so it can start prefetching things from memory. This thing executes two branches simultaneously, and then whichever one actually happened, it makes a reality. I'm going to make the physicist cringe. It sounds like quantum mechanics where it collapses into a, uh, a state when it's in a quantum mechanical superposition. They've also added some new instructions, including extensions to AVX512 to do VEX encoding. So that's VNNI slash VEX. In a core, we've got double the L2 associativity, double the L2 bandwidth, the low latency L3 with 320 L3 in-flight misses. And yes, the L3 cache is still a victim cache, but things are a lot smarter now. I mean, real world actually using this thing as a workstation is delightful. Now for our benchmarking, we've got a full suite of Pharonix test suite benchmarks. I'm sure Michael Larbolt at Pharonix is gonna have his own set of benchmarks that are definitely worth checking out. But for me, the specific things that I wanted to look at is memory bandwidth improvement, memory subsystem improvement, ECC out of the box, like what you can expect for a workstation use. And yeah, I mean, this is Zen 5 server. Not a lot of people are buying these for Zen 5 servers. Uh, my own side project help and assistance with uh, game servers in the data center notwithstanding, I mean, this is a pretty competent little box that can handle a 4090 and is in 2U and, you know, 16 cores. It's serious business. But for desktop computing and everything else, people just want a box that's reliable, that works really well and everything else. And I'm really happy to report that, yeah, the ECC memory support carries over not only to the X670E Steel Legend. If you don't need a lot of PCIe slots, this is one of the best value boards for a Linux workstation because of the NICs and because of the board layout and everything else. I wish it had more PCIe slots. You can trade up to the Tai Chi. We also have the Asus ProArt X670 and B650. The X670 is a 10 gig board. That is a premium price board. But if you need 10 gigabit ethernet, that is not a bad deal for what it is. And you get all the features, including full support for ECC. And I've tested these CPUs on these boards 
And I'm very, very happy to report that even my, you know, like reference design micron memory, which can be a little bit of a challenge to get working, works perfectly in ECC mode, data width, 72 bits, etc., etc., on B650, X670, X670E, on these specific boards. Not all boards really handle ECC properly, but the Agiza, the low level code, which is a little buggy when we're talking about when AM5 first launched with these use cases, uh, has now been fixed and works really well. Gigabyte boards, which previously did not post, so like the Aorus AX, which is another good value board for what it is, has properly working ECC support as well. And so that's the big three. You can find a board, no matter who your favorite vendor is, that actually will have correctly working ECC support. I know there's a lot in the Linux community that just want to run ECC support. Don't be misled by the DDR5 specification, which is uh, on die ECC. That's not having the extra chip. And the 24 and the 48 gig DIMMs are typically a better deal than their 32 and 64 gig counterparts. Two DIMMs per system, you know, you can do four DIMMs in a system, but don't actually run four DIMMs with AM5. That hasn't really changed, but the memory bandwidth has improved. DDR5 5600 fully supported in both two and four slot motherboards when you're using a single DIMM per channel. If you're thinking that sounds like Intel's specification, you would be wrong. Intel's specification is actually one DIMM routed per channel. It says that in small print in the memory specification. I asked a large system integrator for clarification on this, and they said, yeah, that's how we understand it. I asked a small system integrator, is like, is this what Intel has told you? Yes, that's what they told them. Which is wild, because that's not the impression that I got from, you know, the whole YouTuber thing. Uh, 5600, one DIMM per channel. Not a thing unless you're only using a motherboard that has two slots. I guess AMD's had the better memory controller all along. Zen 5 is launching with the Ryzen 5 and the Ryzen 7 processors, six and eight cores. I have a feeling we have 12 and 16 cores coming up. I can neither confirm nor deny that. I'm one of this level one, I'm signing out. You can find me in the level one forums and link to our Phronix benchmarks and everything else below. Good luck, have fun. Zen 5 is looking pretty great. If you didn't upgrade to Zen 4 and you were wanting to, now might be the time. Although, this lays the groundwork for Zen 6 as well, so... Looks pretty good. Like that IPC uplift, like the clock, like the stability improvements, like the quality of life from the ecosystem improvements. Alright, I'm signing out. You can find me in the forums. If you got any questions, want to see a test, let's take it for a spin. Let's do it! Alright, signing out. I'll see you later.